In today's video, I'm going to show you a day in the life of a digital nomad in Bali and show you the pros and cons of choosing Bali as your base so that you can decide whether that's the place for you that it's going to be your base as well as reveal why it's probably not going to be the base for me personally. Let's go. Good morning. It's 6.30, 6.40. We're about to go to morning yoga. I look crazy because I just got up. Every time I make these plans to go somewhere in the morning, I'm so excited until the morning of comes and I have to scrape myself out of bed. Not an ordinary bird, as you can see, but it's absolutely beautiful outside. All right. We are on our way to yoga studio. This is our very not cute roller. It's legit the worst ones of all we've had. And we've had a lot on Bali. Like you can only barely see it's running away, but it is what it is. So let's go. One thing that really positively surprised me about Uluwatu is just how empty the streets were because traffic everywhere else in Bali is horrific. But look at this, the streets are empty. And I mean, look at this amazing yoga studio. We were basically practicing straight in nature. It was amazing. If you think doing yoga outside of the temperatures makes you sweat like crazy, you're absolutely right. And we're off to go to the beach. I really love this view. My favorite in Bali so far, probably. I mean, that's also the reality of life in Bali. You could have the most breathtaking views and piles of trash right next to it. Obviously, the pretty picture you see on Instagram is not the entire picture, like pretty much anywhere else in the world. Post morning dip, we're at Milasti Beach, which is supposed to be like one of the most beautiful Bali beaches according to many, many ratings. But you've also probably seen it on Instagram through all of these like beach clubs like Karma and Sunday Beach Club. And it is, I have to say so far, the most beautiful beach we've been to on Bali, which makes me really happy because I was about to go out in this video and say Bali has no beautiful beaches whatsoever. It's all just Instagram filters. But being here, I am changing my mind a little bit. Still, I would say if you're wanting to go to Bali to enjoy like this paradise like tropical beaches, it's not the island to go. I remember when I was watching vlogs of other digital nomads living on Bali and just like general Instagram videos, I was like, wow, Bali has a lot of really beautiful beaches. And then when we came here, I was like, wait a second, the beaches aren't cute. And granted, you always have this difference between Instagram and reality. But it's never been as harsh as coming to Balinese beaches. The beach in Changu is just really not cute. The sand is just not looking nice. There is plastic and trash literally everywhere. In water, on the beach, near the cab is everywhere. The water just looks very dirty as well. Like, it's just not cute. But also all of these beaches you see on Instagram, like this hidden Uluwatu beach in between the rocks. Yes, it looks beautiful, but not nearly as much as people would have you believe with these filters. So yeah, I wouldn't say it's a con per se, but if you're coming to Bali expecting tropical paradise like beaches, you are going to be disappointed. So I would say just adjust your expectations a little bit. But on the other hand, if the only thing you need a beach for is surfing, then Bali is absolutely your spot. So we've tried surfing for the first time around seven years ago in Portugal and then never since. But in Changu, we were like, hey, a lot of our friends are surfing in Changu. They're really loving it. Should we give it another try? And so we did. And it was just absolutely amazing. The waves were not too high. They were not too low. They were perfect. I would say for beginners and maybe like intermediates, our surf teachers were really, really nice. It was just such a pleasant experience overall. So if that's the only thing you need your beach for and you want to get your surfing fix every single day, then Bali might be the place for you. But I will say that because we were here in the rain season whilst we were surfing we were really like swimming with all of the trash that got brought into the ocean from the rivers um, it was a little bit disgusting to be honest but the surfing itself was amazing Another thing I really did not expect, but that took me back a little bit, is just how much burnings and like fires are happening around. From illegal trash burning in Changu, which granted you don't see that much, 
to rice fields burning in Ubud. So burning rice fields in Ubud is like a farming practice where when they've harvested the crop, they're gonna burn it just to make space for new rice. And since rice is growing all year round, the burning happens literally all year round. And I know it's a farming practice, they gotta do what they gotta do, but especially if you're in Ubud and it happens every single day while you're there, for like two or three hours a day, you cannot be outside. Oh, as we're talking, I don't know if you can see, there's also some fires going on. I don't know what the heck they're burning there, probably trash. But yeah, even at our villa in Uba, they would tell us, don't open the windows for the next three hours. Please don't open the doors, try to stay indoors. And the thing is, these burns, it's not like there's a dedicated hour when they're happening. It's all around the clock, all year round. If you're gonna be staying here long term, well, I think it's not that good for your lung health. So there's that. All right, another thing, and I swear I'm not a Bali hater. Oh my God, recording this makes me feel like one, but I'm just sharing things I wish I'd heard about or people were to talk about honestly online before coming here is the food. I don't know, I think we can all universally agree. Food is something that brings all of us joy and food in Bali really did disappoint. I love Asian cuisine and I was so excited to come here and from everyone online going to all these cute cafes and all these cute restaurants, they were like, wow, the food is amazing. Amazing. So when we came here and started going out to eat, I was like, what? What is this? Are we going to really shitty restaurants? The food was just continuously average or below average. Even in the cute cafes, even in these fancy restaurants, it was just not that good. I've only had a handful of experiences here in Bali where I was like, wow, like this is actually really good. Uluwatu has been better than Changu and Ubud, but in Changu, I didn't like almost none of the restaurants if I'm being completely honest. In Ubud, there was this really good restaurant, Russian cuisine. Out of all cuisines they could be doing, it was Russian cuisine. I was so surprised and it tasted really authentic and it was really, really good. The name I think it was green rabbit or just rabbit or something like that. In Uluwatu, we did have a few restaurants where I was like, oh wow, like this is actually really, really, really good. But yeah, like all in all, the food has been somewhat of a disappointing experience here. And another thing is it makes literally zero sense for you to buy groceries and cook them yourself because buying groceries ends up being more expensive than going out to eat at a restaurant. I don't know how that works out. I guess that the restaurants they buy at the local markets. But anytime you go to a supermarket, I think our average would come up to around like 15, 20 euros for like nothing, like two mangoes, a bag of rice crisps, and I don't know, something else. And then you'd go out to eat and you'd pay like seven to 10 euros for two people, including drinks. So yeah, now I would say, let's go get some breakfast because I'm starving. Well, 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 after I bashed all Balinese cafes, we actually went to the cafe that I enjoyed a lot. It's called Suka and they have it in Ubud and Uluwatu, so I definitely recommend this one. And since we're talking about food, let's talk about one of the biggest cons, at least for me personally, in Bali, and that is the sanitation conditions. So there is a thing called Bali Belly, and it's a thing, it's when tourists come to Bali and they eat their way through all these fancy cafes and restaurants, and what ends up happening is that they just get severe food poisoning sometimes even parasites. It's not cute, it can go on for weeks, sometimes even months of just you throwing up, you have diarrhea, all of the fun stuff. Now, this is not our first rodeo and we went to countries before that had really poor sanitation conditions where if you literally wash something under a tap of running water, it would make it worse, like Bolivia or Pakistan. So we are really strictly following the rules to make sure we don't get ballet belly. So the rules go as follow. You only eat something if it's been cooked or boiled, if it's been peeled, or you just it. You just don't eat it. No ice, no brushing your teeth with a run in tap water. We actually brush our teeth with bottled water. So far, so good. And you might think, Anna, isn't that a little bit of an overkill? Can't you just brush your teeth with a damn tap water? can you just eat that green salad? Well, we've actually met up with friends who were in Bali at the same time as we were. They were eating the salads and guess what they told us a week ago? They had Bali Bali. Thank you. Now, I'm breaking my own rules. I'm li really loose on the ice rule because I just know most of the ice here comes prepackaged and I cannot, for the life of me, give up iced flat whites. The cafe, he said he did not want. What do you have to say in your defense? You deserved it. <laughs> you deserved it. 
So even though these rules work, they just feel super limiting to me personally. We've been in Bali for two and a half weeks and for entirety of these two and a half weeks, I have not had fresh salad. And I'm someone who really enjoys like fresh fruit and veg. And sure, like you can peel the cucumbers, I'll eat that. But you kind of just like eat fresh stuff with the same peace of mind that you could, let's say in Australia or Europe. So that's definitely a negative for me. I cannot imagine living somewhere long term and like not being able to eat fresh stuff, only ever eating something fried or completely cooked through. Are you gonna eat that green salad? Not sure about it. Oh, he's gonna, ri oh, he's risking it. Let's see if he gets salad belly tonight. Okay, he did not do it in the end. All right, we came home to take a quick shower, grab our laptops, and then we're gonna go to a co-working space. All right, so after I've poured out a lot of cons to Bali, let's look at a more of a positive side and things that I really, really enjoyed. Without question, one of the craziest things, and I think why it's so popular with all of the digital nomads, is just the amount of things you can do. From yoga studios, to Pilates studios, to cafes, to bars, to cute co-working spaces, it really does feel like a playground for adults especially as you drive through Changu it feels so surreal because the density of places like that is so much higher than let's say in New York or Berlin or London every other building is some sort of a studio or a cafe or a restaurant and all of them are really really cute and obviously even though the prices for this sort of places are way out of the locals price range for digital nomads who are coming from all over the world it's still so much cheaper for example to go to reformer pilates in bali than to do so in let's say berlin i think unless you're really here and see it with your own eyes you can't really understand just how many places there are just how many restaurants and cafes etc and what's even crazier to me is when you drive through changu or uluwatu it's like one big construction site there is construction site of the construction site of the construction site every studio instead of renting a place that already exists they're building like a whole new building just for themselves if you're going to be living anywhere in Changu, you bet there's going to be construction sites, noise everywhere you go, whether that's a co-working space, a cafe, or even your own Airbnb or hotel. So here's my tip for you. If you do want a little bit more peace and quiet, and maybe you need quiet space to work, then definitely I would recommend going a little bit outside of the city. Yes, you will probably need a little bit more time to drive into the city, but I think it really depends on what you value more, peace and quiet or being like right in the middle of it all. In Changu, we stay literally two streets away from the beach and every night when going to sleep we could hear the music from Finn's Beach Club which didn't bother us too much uh, we were only there for a week but I can imagine if you're gonna be somewhere really long term it can get quite tiring now another pro of Bali which I'm sure you've already heard about is that there is a really big huge community of digital nomads now especially if you're a solo traveler I could definitely see how Bali would be just such an easy place to meet people and and get your own group of friends because there are just so many people coming from all over the world to stay here. The co-working places are always full. I mean, honestly, when you walk through the streets of Changu or even Uluwatu, sometimes you're like, wait a second, like which country am I in? Just because you hear all of these crazy mix of languages and people are really from all over the world. So if you do want to be part of a digital nomad community, I do think Bali is like the perfect spot for that. Another definitive pro is that it's really affordable and even though the prices have started going up, I still think it's really affordable especially if you want to keep your budget on the low side. For instance, renting a scooter is like 2-3 euros a day, getting that scooter filled up with gas is like 20,000 Indonesian rupees, which would roughly translate to 1 euro or 1 dollar. Going out to eat is anywhere between like 40,000 per main course to 80 to maybe 100,000 if you're in a pricier place, which is still like like four to max 10 euros so really really affordable what i will say though is while we were looking places to stay at especially in changu and especially here in Ulubatu, we've noticed the places are not as affordable the prices per night started like at 100 120 150 per night maybe we were too late with bookings i don't know and granted we didn't look at like backpackers hotels or hostels uh, we did want our own place because like i said we were working remotely so it's 
really important for us to have a place with a table and you know somewhere we can just concentrate and work so that's one thing but still all in all bali is still a super cheap destination and especially if you're traveling on a budget or you just want to try out this whole digital nomad thing it can be a really great place to start without breaking your bank So we're co-working in this really cute spot which I love called Alchemy and it's like a restaurant and a yoga studio all in one and we've actually visited it also in Ubud that was our daily yoga spot which was honestly the highlight of my time there unfortunately the one in Uluwatu is not open yet they've just have the restaurant and the yoga studio is opening like next week so we're missing it by a heartbeat but honestly coming to Alchemy every single day in Ubud was just such a special special experience. The way the yoga spaces are created, it's not like a closed off building, you're not doing yoga indoors, you really feel one with the nature because you're in these beautiful domes and they're all made out of natural materials and it just feels so 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 special to practice there. I really would have loved it to try it out in Uluwatu, I think like you can see it right there behind me. They're still building it and the opening like I said is next week. But yeah, if you're in Uluwatu and if you're looking for a yoga spot, I definitely love the one in Ubu. And this oneness with the nature, I have to say, is another pro for me for Bali. It's something I really, really enjoyed here. Not so much in Changu, I have to admit, because Changu, the nature is just non-existent. It's just home buildings and roads and... I guess you have the ocean, but there are not like a lot of plants. Like you have house plants or if the restaurant outside plants like a fig tree leaf or a palm, but it's not like you're surrounded by nature. But when you drive up to Ubud or here in Uluwatu, it's a completely different story. I mean, Ubud, we were living right in the middle of rice fields and it was just such a special experience to wake up go out to the balcony and as far and wide as the eye can see it's just all greenery and it's just such a lush landscape. Driving through Ubud rice fields was by far one of the highlights of my trip to Bali. It was one of the highlights I think generally when it comes to nature of what I've seen in the world. It's just so breathtaking. The videos and pictures really don't do it justice. So if you're in Bali I would highly recommend coming up here even if you want to stay by the ocean even just to see the rice fields for yourself because they really are worth it. And yeah being surrounded by nature here in Uluwatu as well. I definitely feel like Uluwatu has somewhat of a Changu vibe, but it's like 10, 100 times more chill. There's not as much traffic. It's just simply not as big, but there's also a lot more nature. The cliffs, um, just like the trees you're driving through forests. So yeah, definitely nature was one of the highlights in Bali. Rest assured, you will always have great coffee in Bali, unlike food, which again was disappointing. It looked way better than it tasted. All right, that's enough work for today. Let's head to another beach. And by the way, if you're asking yourself, is she glowing? Is it her highlighter? Did she overdo it? Or is it sweat? The answer is the letter. All of this is sweat. Which brings me to another con of living in Bali. It's hot. It's like really, really hot. I mean, it's tropics, right? So what do you expect? And it's not like I'm complaining about hot weather. I wanted to go somewhere warm. That's the entire reason I wanted to be a digital nomad to escape gray winters in Berlin. But I've also stayed at other tropical spots before like Brazil or Thailand. And you know what? It was somehow a little bit more bearable <laughs> there. I mean, Thailand pretty much has the same weather as Bali, but there were a lot more air cons. In Bali, a lot of places you go to, there's no air con there's just like this ventilator going around and fair enough aircon can be expensive and it needs a lot of electricity but especially if you're going to be working from cafes or co-working spaces you will have to get used to sweating non-stop all the time and i don't know about you but being hot all the freaking time gets me really lethargic i cannot think as clearly my brain is just slow and foggy like every time you go out of the house within five minutes you're drenched it's not like just a few droplets of sweat here and there you're drenched when we're traveling and going to different places This is just nomad. I know it might seem like it's a vacation, but it's actually not, right? Like I need to be productive. I need to still get stuff done. So if half of the time I'm like locking myself up in my room just to be able to work normally, it's not ideal to be honest. I guess I'm just like more of a, I don't know, 25 degrees max all year round kind of girl. 
We went to Singleton Valley and the sunset views from this place are amazing. I really recommend going there, but they do get really full. We literally had to sit somewhere on the stairs because everything was packed. So if you go, reserve a place. Another thing that I just didn't love about Bali was the traffic. And granted, we were here in some of the off season and still every time we went on a scooter in Chang'e or Ubud, I was holding on for my dear life. It was not a chill experience. It could be going to yoga in the morning to like be all zen and meditate and be like present in a moment, but the 15 minutes ride to a yoga center would be like so cortisol inducing and so high in adrenaline because people here drive crazy. And granted, we've been in Uluwatu for a couple of days and the traffic is here. It's pretty much non existent, which is just such a welcome change because in Changu or in Ubud, you would get on a scooter and literally it would first of all be super duper packed especially in Chango where there's just so many people and people would drive like there is no tomorrow like they're mortal honestly around three to four times we almost got t-boned or people were just like turning to us without looking just the sheer amount of scooters and cars is insane and I cannot even imagine how it must be like in an actual high season but people are overtaking each other constantly they're constantly cutting into the lines they're even going like on an opposite direction lanes every time we had to go somewhere I was like oh I really don't want to go on a scooter. And the thing is, walking by foot, even if you're close around cafes, is not really an option either, because there's just no sidewalks. And so even if the cafe is like a kilometer away or like 700 meters away, it'd still be safer or better off taking a scooter and you just cannot walk anywhere. Another thing is mosquito bites make you go paranoid. So normally I wouldn't care, but especially in Bali, there are a lot of mosquitoes who contract dengue fever. And dengue fever is not something to be toyed around with. Like you could literally end up in a hospital with really severe conditions. People are even dying from it. Before we flew to Bali, we actually got the newest vaccine that supposedly gives you like 60% protection from dengue because we actually had like two friends who have had dengue and who have had to go to the hospital and then completely stopped their travels and had to fly home because that's how severe it was and after hanging around forums and reading how other digital nomads who lived in Bali went about the topic I've realized it actually happens much more often than you might think and so yeah every time you get a mosquito bite you get a little bit of like oh I hope it's not the one because yeah of course we have 60% protection but 60 is not 100 so you know just not a chill atmosphere or you literally cover yourself like to toe and bog repellent. So a reminder for you guys, get your travel insurance. Don't toy around with this stuff. And if you're not opposed to it, maybe throw in a dengue vaccination in it as well. We watched the sunset at Sinkelfin and it was amazing. Some people were still out there surfing. I mean, the scenery is just out of this world. And then we still were so hungry because there was no space there to eat. So we went to another local cafe called Varung Local. And it's like a traditional Varung of Bali, but with a hipstery spin to it, still locally owned. The food is quite okay there. So if you're in Uluwatu, definitely give it a visit. TMI, but I'm still totally sweaty and super hot. It's just the reality of things in Bali, so I think I'm gonna go and jump in a pool just to cool off. Yeah, so that did nothing to cool me off because this is just like a hot jacuzzi. It's been warmed up all day by the sun. We're well, rolling with it, you know, just chilling in a pool that's boiling hot. So I hope this vlog helped you understand sort of the pros and cons of Bali from a perspective of a digital nomad living here. Obviously, all of the opinions are my own. You or your friends might see things differently and that's will be fine, but I do hope that this will help you decide whether that's a place for you. I personally am always a friend of making my own picture instead of just going off of what other people are saying, but I hope that a few things that I've mentioned will help you prep for your Bali stay better. As for the reason, I don't think Bali will be our digital nomad base let me preface this by saying that i was 100 a thousand percent sure when we were flying to bali this trip was just for us to sort of figure out what part of the island we liked more so that when we do come back for like a couple of months or half a year that we would already know what we prefer and just like stay there for longer i was convinced that we just from now on spend all of our digital nomad time in bali and i don't think we will honestly and there are a couple of reasons for that obviously the cons i've mentioned before but primarily because 
the vibes are off i know this sounds super vague and you're like what are you going on about so let me try and explain myself as best i can bali is absolutely beautiful it's just such a magical island and the nature is amazing and all the people are so friendly but i have to say when we first came to chango and that was the first place we stayed i was like what is going on here the instagram versus reality comparison was really not flattering like all of those hyper edited influencer pictures you see on instagram and all of those curated aesthetic videos they're just that they're social media gimmicks i just couldn't shake off a weird feeling like it was colonization 2.0 vibes especially in chango you have locals there who were born and raised yet cannot afford to live there anymore and you drive through Chango and it's like Pilates studio after Pilates studio, cafe after cafe after cafe. Cafe is fancier than I've seen in New York and Berlin and London combined. In this culture of like hyper self-optimization, it feels very individualistic, it feels very western. It feels like basically all of the digital nomads coming to Chango decided to build like an adult playground for themselves and of course it can be nice and of course like partying on it fins or like going to all these fancy yoga studios can be super fun but it also felt weird i don't know why it just it, it it triggered me a little bit i didn't enjoy the vibe particularly i can see how if you're maybe at the start of your 20s that might be interesting but i just felt like wow this island is suffocating and if that's not even the max capacity and if they keep on building these buildings and if they keep on attracting new tourists like how how is this gonna work like traffic wise space wise there's already not enough space in chango for anything so yeah i was surprised myself i mean i absolutely loved my time in Bali. It was amazing, but definitely not like the digital nomad paradise that the social media paints it to be. So yeah, that's from me. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And I'm curious to hear from you. When are you going to Bali? Are you going soon? Which part will you go first? Or which other areas in the world you're considering as your digital nomad base? Also, let me just say that I'm so freaking proud of myself for actually doing this vlog. I was so terrified just talking in front of people this entire day and i did get a few dirty looks but you know what you just gotta lean into it you just gotta do it and it was real fun and i actually think i want to do more vlogs in the future let me know if that's a format you enjoy watching too and i catch you in the next one